to the miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. What does it mean that she would receive a deadly wound? Lost her leader. Right. Does it mean was conquered? Does it mean that she's put out? No. She continued to go. The deadly wound means the sword was taken out of her hand. Okay? That's what the deadly wound means. She can't deadly wound anybody without the sword. Brothers and sisters, the Pope is coming here the 24th of this month to address the House and the Senate. Okay? This is unprecedented. You know, we were duped into sending representatives, ambassadors to a church. And guess what? How much of a step is it far? You know, come on, people don't even realize. They don't even know what's happening. This isn't a Republican-Democrat issue. This is a dumbed-down issue. People don't know the Word of God. Very soon, that sword will be put back in her hands. And when it is, this two-horned lamb that speaks like a dragon will realize, oh no, what have we done? It's going to be too late, brothers and sisters. It's too late. We need to get this message out today. These people need to know. We need to call people into the most holy place. We shouldn't be leaving the most holy place to go after them. We need to call them in. Come out of Babylon. Right? Isn't that what we should be doing? Calling them out? This is terribly sad. You know, God wants to save all that he can. That's why this thing is still going on. Because he's such a great and gracious God. And he loves so much that he wants more to be saved. But you know, it's it, it, it just surprising to me that the darkness has to get so dark for people to see the light. Why is that? Why is that? Is there something about the human heart, so much pride, that we refuse to see? Are we so dumbed down? You know, Jonah was called to be a prophet. He was called to Nineveh, wasn't he? And he was called to preach to the people. And he was angry about it. He didn't want to do it. He knew God would save all those people. And what did God say? Shouldn't I have compassion on them that don't know the difference between their left hand and their right hand? God says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I do not change. If God was to change, he'd fail to be God. Our God is holy, He's perfect, He's just and true. If you can say it this way, He's, all, he's always the same and like never before. That's pretty amazing. I love this. I love this. We as a people, brothers and sisters, have a work to do. We have a job to do. And we can't compromise. We can't compromise. There's so much garbage and filth out there. It's just dragging everybody down. Dragging them down. You know, I had this guy. I'm so thankful for the way God's working in my life. I was in Houston, coming through Houston. <laughs> and this guy, I don't know, probably 50 years old, pickup truck, red Ford pickup. He's on the phone like this, right? And he's trying to drive. 
and he's got papers on the seat. I don't know, he's, maybe he's flipping the papers with this hand. He's got the phone like this, and he's driving. And he's, I'm in the other lane, and this guy's, I mean, thank God there was nobody over there. I was able to go all the way over to the other lane. He come all the way over the other lane, and when he realized, well, he whips it back, he whips it back so hard, he comes over into the other lane beyond that, almost hits somebody. You know what? A spirit came over to me to just pray for this man. That I wasn't angry with him. I wasn't upset with him. I didn't call him jerk, moron, idiot driver. I had compassion on him. That's not me. That's God. You know? And no, I didn't honk the horn. <laughs> Did you honk that hard? <laughs> I didn't honk I don't know. We, we don't know what's going on with people. We don't know what the deal is. I, I have no idea what he was trying to read. I mean, he could have just lost his wife. Who knows? But we, brothers and sisters, if we don't have compassion one to another, I mean, we're not supposed to look like the world. Amen. We're supposed to be at Venice. We're supposed to be in the most holy place. We have a a wonderful message of salvation from a holy God that, that loves and cares about you. You know, I don't know how these people get up on Sunday and, and preach about hell and torment that burns forever and ever. I, I don't get that. How can you say this, this God that loves me does these things? How could it be possible? How could it be possible? I got so much scripture I wanted to get into, but I read too much today. But I thought that was such a good read that I couldn't bear to cut it short. And I hope if you've heard nothing else today, you caught on to some of the message, this end time message that this is serious business. Prayer, brothers and sisters, is serious business. You know? Um, getting physical and getting in shape and doing things rather than just laying on the couch and watching the boob tube and eating a big fat donut. There's something to there's work to it. You know what I mean? There's work to prayer. Prayer is work. It is. You have to think. You have to have a conversation. You know what I'm saying? This isn't just easy stuff. I'm not talking about Spending 10 seconds in prayer, right? And then how many hours doing what? Doing what? What really matters? When it's all said and done, what matters? What was done for Christ is what's going to matter. I hope, I hope you guys are reaching out. I hope you're digging deep. I hope that you graduate, get off the milk program, get into some serious stuff, because there's serious stuff happening all around us and people are dying. People are dying left and right and they don't even know who Jesus is. They have no idea. I don't want to end this on a bitter note. I hope this, this shouldn't be somber. This isn't really a somber message. You guys are all just sitting there like, No smiles or nothing. It's serious. It, it is serious. It is a very serious message. But the Lord loves us and He's going to see us through. And He's going to be there. He's, he's, he's promised. He will never leave us nor forsake us. But remember, listen, brothers and sisters, it's always darkest just before the light. Just before the light. In this day right now, if you went out there and got in a hole, you went in a hole so it would be dark enough. Just like a little manhole covering the ground right out there, about 20 feet down, and you look straight up, you can see all the stars. During the day, you can see all the stars. It may not seem possible, but it's true. Because it's dark enough down in that hole that you can see the light. Our closing hymn will be 426.
I hope it's things that I said have come across too harsh, but I, I, I want people to realize, Lord, that this isn't going to be easy. There's nothing easy about what's coming. We are going to be tested. We are going to be tried. We are going to be poked and prodded. Lord, I pray that we would look to you, that we would seek your face, that we would wholly lean on you, and we would let go of this wretched, Self-reliance. Me, myself, I know it's there. It's always wanting to prop its head up. And, oh, I can do it. I can do it. Father, I want to admit before you in this whole world that I can do nothing without you. I need you and I want your will upon my life and I believe everybody here too seeks that. Not just for themselves, but for their families, for their loved ones. I pray that you would reach out to our loved ones everyone here present and the ones that we love that they would see your face and look and live in Jesus name we pray Amen, Amen.